Hey guys, so now we are going to do uh, DH parameter questions and this is the part 3. If you haven't watched part 1 and part 2, please do watch them. Then after them, after watching them, please come to this video. So now in this video, we are already given a articulated robot arm and in this we have two revolute joints. That is, this is the first revolute joint and this is the second revolute joint and this is the end effector part. And this we are already marked the uh, Z axis and the X axis and theta 1 and theta 2 are already given to us in the question along with the lengths of the uh, links that is a1 and a2 so now we have to find the dh parameters that is theta alpha a and d in many books you will find a written as r also so they mean the same thing now first of all we will consider the zeroth frame and the first frame that is this is our zeroth frame and this is our first frame so now let us first find theta so theta for finding theta we have to make sure that x1 that is x0 sorry x0 and x1 lie in the same direction and if they do not lie in the same direction then we will rotate z0 such that x0 and x1 lie in the same direction so as we can see that x0 and x1 do not lie in the same direction so we will rotate the first frame that is this frame anti-clockwise by theta 1 that is given to us so we will be writing theta 1 over here and it will be positive we have taken it to be positive as you can see that we are rotating it anti-clockwise and the notation for anti-clockwise is that the angle is to be taken is taken as negative positive sorry and now similarly for the frame 1 to h we have taken this frame to be h instead of 3 instead of 2 sorry so we have we will now consider from 1 to h now in order to find theta we have to make sure that x1 that is this part this axis and xh should lie in the same direction so as we can see that they do not lie in the same direction so we will be rotating the frame second frame with respect to z1 so that x1 and xh lie in the same direction so in order to do so we will be rotating the second frame or the first frame by an angle theta 2 as we can see that according to the question we are given uh, theta 2 to be negative and here we have to rotate the angle clockwise by theta 2 in order to get x1 point in the direction as xh so as we are rotating it clockwise our angle should be taken as negative but we are already given that theta 2 is negative so negative and negative will become positive so we will be writing plus theta 2 over here now for the second part we will be finding out alpha now alpha we have to make sure that z0 and z1 let me change the color that z0 and z1 lie in the same direction and if they do not lie in the same direction then we will be rotating the zeroth frame or the first frame with respect to xn that is the uh, x axis of the next frame so as we can see that z0 and z1 already lie in the same plane so there is no need to rotate anything so we will be writing 0 over here now similarly we will see notice that over here z1 and zh that is from a1 a to ah uh, they lie in the same direction that is z1 and zh point in the same direction so there is no need to rotate anything we will be simply writing zero over here again now uh, the second last part is to find a or r now a is the distance between the origin of the first frame and the second frame that is this frame and this frame and it is measured along x1 so it is measured along x1 so you will notice that a1 is the distance between these two points so we will be writing a1 over here now similarly if we measure the distance between this point and this point or we can say the joints and it is it is to be measured along xh so you will notice that if we extend xh, XH it will uh, intersect or it will pass through the origin of the previous frame and that distance is a2 so we will be writing a2 over here now for d2 so sorry now for d we will now find the distance between the origins as we did earlier 
now the only difference is that now we will be measuring it along the z0 axis that is the z axis of the previous frame so now if i measure the axis uh, measure the distance between the these two points along the z0 axis it will be zero please do not get confused as z is not in the plane of the paper it is coming outside the plane of the paper that is it is perpendicular to the plane of the paper so if you extend uh, z0 it won't pass through this point so we will be writing zero over here now similarly uh, z1 over here and zh over here they are also perpendicular to the plane of the paper and if we try to find the distance between them there won't be any distance because they won't be passed through they won't pass through the origin of any of the points any of the frames so we won't be considering any distance so we will write zero over here i'll repeat we have to find for finding d we have to find the distance between these two points that is the origins of these two frames such that it is measured along z1 now as z1 is perpendicular to the plane of the paper this point that is this axis is perpendicular to the plane of the paper so it won't pass through this point of the next frame that is why we have written zero over here now guys we have found out all the parameters that we wanted to find out in the dh table now we will be using them that is we will plug these values plug these values into a matrix now as i had described in my earlier videos that there are two types of matrices first one is for revolute joint and the second one is for a prismatic joint okay so here we can see that we only have revolute joints and no prismatic joint is present so we will be using only this matrix that is for the revolute joint and i have written many times what the matrix for revolute joint is and don't worry i'll be writing it again that is we will write cos theta over here minus sin theta cos alpha sin theta sin alpha and a cos theta sin theta will come over here and then cos theta cos alpha minus cos theta sin alpha a sin theta 0 sin alpha cos alpha d then we have 0 0 0 and 1 over here now what we will do we will simply put these values one by one that is first we will use this row that is the first row and put the values over here then we will write this matrix again and now we will put the value of the second row over here now we will name this matrix as 0 to a1 and this will we will name it as 1 to ah so now we will get the final matrix as 0 to ah as 0 a1 and 1 to ah so this will be your final answer so guys i hope you were able to understand this question and please try to do it on your own and if you have any doubt please write it in the comment section and if you were able to do it in one go then write wow in the comment section and i'll know that you were able to do it in one go so this is it for this video see you in the next one